merits of these little Chinese radios for ham radio use. You know, I've been hearing a lot of haters on YouTube and um, and the other parts of the internet about how they won't allow these Baofeng radios on their on their repeaters because of spectral impurities and, and the like. So I think that's just a bunch of bunk. Um, my son, my, my kids are both hams. My daughter became a ham when she was 11. My son was a ham when he was 13. My wife's a ham. My son went out and bought a pair of these and he showed them to me and I was so impressed that uh, I got a pair for myself. I wanted to examine the build quality, um, the performance, and, um, and uh, frankly for the price, I think they can't be beat. Um, you know, if the ham radio is going to survive and we're going to maintain the spectrum that the FCC has allocated to us, we have to have some users and that's going to require young people coming into the fold. Um, buying a premium Japanese radio is a little bit of a barrier to entry for, uh, for ham radio, but for $25, if we can get a young person to enter the hobby and uh, take their test and start having some fun with the hobby, then they'll expand and they'll be able to buy whatever they want once they have a job. But I think these these little radios are terrific for entry level use, and uh, I would say if you're a, a young person that wants to become a ham and you have twenty five dollars, go out on eBay and get one of these. Take your test uh, with your local um, volunteer examiners. Start having some fun with it. Um, you know the, the hating I'm hearing about oh the uh, Chinese radios. You know it's the same thing I heard when the Japanese cars came into the U.S. market when Datsun and and uh, Honda and Toyota came in. They said oh they're no good. And uh, pretty soon the quality of those uh, exceeded the, uh, the uh, U.S. cars. And then the same haters were, you know, they were saying when the Korean cars came into the market, oh, they, you know, they're no good. And now the Korean cars are just as good as the Japanese cars. So I think these uh, Chinese manufacturers are sending a shot across the bow to the Japanese manufacturers. says, hey, you better step your game up because uh, we're going to capture market share. And it's just business, you know, with these uh, cheaper radios. So ICOM and Kenwood and Yezu better figure out a way to to compete with these folks. You know, when uh, the refrigerator was invented, the Iceman was complaining that refrigerators were no good, and then the Iceman had to go figure out something else to do. So um, now getting to, over to the spectral impurity discussion, um, I, you know, my ham shack, I use ICOM equipment um, for all of my all of my boxes here. Uh, my personal handheld that I typically use is a Motorola. So I'm gonna go over here, and we're gonna look at this Win radio display. And I'm going to key two transmitters here. I have a pair of Baofeng, so I'm going to key the other one, and I'm going to key the Motorola, and I'm not going to tell you which is which. You tell me which is which. Here is uh, transmitter A. That's that one. And I'm going to set that one down. I'm going to pick up transmitter B, and then I'm going to key that one. So you tell me which is which. So one of those was a Motorola, and the other one was a Baofeng. So in conclusion, I would say if you're a young person and you want to become a ham and you have $25, Go out and, and get that. Start uh, learning how to program the radio. Take your, uh, your ham test and start having some fun with it. All right, I'm out.